Okay, so my story actually began uh, more than 30 years ago at a Hanukkah party. My children were little. My brother was there. His children were little. And my mother was there and my sister was there. And it was at my home. And it was a beautiful Hanukkah party. And my brother and I, best friends, best friends. And he sat down at the piano, which was really strange because he doesn't play piano. So he sat <laughs> down at the piano and he burst out into tears. Now, hmm. here I was, 30 years old, best friends with him forever. I have never seen him cry. He sat down and he was sobbing. He couldn't catch his breath. I said, so what's going on? And everybody crowded around him. Everybody, his, his wife, his children, my children, my mother, my sister. And I couldn't anymore because I can't, crowds I just can't do. So I went up the steps so I could see down below what's going on, what's happening. And he just said, I just, I can't take it anymore. There, everybody says, what? What can't you take? He said, he takes a deep breath and he, he lets it out. He says, every night, my entire life, I'm having a horrible nightmare. The same nightmare over and over again. Now, at this point, he's 30, right? How, how is he having a nightmare for 30 years? I shared, I, was, I shared a wall to our bedroom. I was on the other side. I wouldn't know if he was having a nightmare. No, I didn't know. So he, 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 my, my mother said, tell us. Tell us maybe if you tell us, something will happen. So he said, it's too horrible, too horrible. Tell us, everybody Everybody forced him. And he said, okay, I'll tell you. I'm a little boy and I'm in this building. It's a, it's like apartment buildings outside made of wood. And um, my parents are fighting. They're arguing. My father says, we have to leave. We have to leave now. And my mother says, no, we're not leaving. We're not leaving. It's not happening. I have my children in this house. My children's bar mitzvahs will be in this house. Their weddings will be in this house. We're not leaving. And it was, they never fought. This was the only thing they ever fought over. This is what he said. So the father made a compromise. He said, all right, I'll, I'll make hiding places for the children. And he showed my brother in his dream underneath the stove. I'm going to make a hole. If something happens, you go under here. If not, you can get to the bedroom you hide in the bed springs at the bottom of the bed. And so this was the plan under the oven or there. Well, all of a sudden in my brother's nightmare, every night there's a pounding at the door, the door opens and his father doesn't have a chance to get him under the stove, doesn't have a chance to get him under the bed. So he throws him in the closet and closes it just a little. And the Nazis came in and they were screaming and screaming and then no screaming. And then he's, the Nazis, he hears his mother screaming, blood curdling scream and then nothing. His father, nothing. And then he hears the footsteps. The oven gets lifted and put back. The bed gets lifted and put back. The door to the closet gets swung open and a hand goes brushing around and the door closes, but not all the way. And the footsteps leave and he hears more screaming in the distance and more screaming. And after a while, there's the footsteps again and they go to the stove, lift the stove, lift the bed and then go to the closet and the hand is coming in and he can hardly breathe, he's so scared. And the hand grabs him and puts his, the hand over his mouth and over his nose and his eyes and he can't breathe and he's being drug out of the closet. And he goes past his father who is dead on the floor and his mother who's dead on the floor and he gets pulled down the steps and all of a sudden he gets thrown into this crowd of people and that's when he wakes up every night in a cold sweat and he can hardly breathe. And I'm on the steps and I'm listening to this and everybody, there's silence in my house. And I look at him and I say, Jay, do you know why? Do you know why you wake up right there? He said, no, I have no idea. I said, 
every single night of my entire life on the other side of the wall from you. I'm having the same nightmare. I'm a little boy. I'm in the I'm in the forest. I figured out a way out of the village. Somebody's giving me chalas, and they said to me, you know, you better get back fast. There's trouble in your village. And I knew right away it's the soldiers. So I run, and I dropped one of the chalas, one of the breads, braided breads for the Sabbath, and, and I'm running, and I'm running. And when I get closer, there's no soldiers. They're not anywhere. It's not even hard to get back in. And I, I walk up the steps and all the doors are open. I, I, I don't look. I don't look. And when I get to my door, there I see my father is dead on the floor. And my mother, who was pregnant, was stabbed in the stomach and dead on the floor. And I, where's my twin? Where is my twin? And I'm looking for him. And I go and I look under the stove and I look under the bed. These were our plans. With his dad said these were our plans. And I can't find him. And I open up the closet. Maybe he's in here and I find him. And I'm begging him, come out. Please come out. We can, I can get us out of here. And he won't come. He's so afraid. I have to pull him, but he's my weight. I'm pulling my own dead weight. I have my hands over his eyes because God forbid he should see my mother. He, God forbid he should see our father. And I have to drag him past and I know my hand slips when we get there. And I know he saw. He can't move. He just can't move. He's frozen with fear. I get him down the steps. I'm begging him, please come with me. But at this point, it's too late. And the soldiers get us and they bring us over to this pit that we've been digging every single day here. Line up everybody and they just start shooting. And I fall in, two bodies above me, he's there. I am not shot. He's shot, but he's not dead. And that's where I wake up every night. Now, since that night that we told us at the Hanukkah party and we hugged and we cried, neither one of us have ever had the dream again.